everybody. It's Brooke with Mrs. Coghill Farm, and it's already hot this morning. I'm sweating already. All I've really done is taken care of the baby goats, milked Fifi, and fed peaches. But my morning routine has changed a little bit after those things get taken care of, and that is because we have a new system up at the egg stand. Um, Jason put a cooler in that is keeping the eggs cool with an ice pack versus a refrigerator that freezes up or just doesn't cool. So this is working out well. Um, but the first thing I do after I take care of the first chores is grab some ice packs, go to the stand and see if I need to replenish. So y'all are gonna go with me. It works out really well because I'm already at the barn we have a refrigerator and a freezer in the barn, so that's where the ice packs stay. So grab the ice packs out and head up to the stand. Well, Biscuit, you look like you might have had a long night along with your companion, Sylvester, over here. Not sure where Bramble is, but y'all are laid out this morning. I had my counterpart bandit follow me up here. Buddy, you gotta stay on that side of the fence until I get finished. It won't be but just a minute, okay? Who knows where Rocky is? All right, so headed out to the stand, I can already see something that catches my eye, and that is somebody returned some egg cartons. You see the egg carton return? There's some cartons. So far, so good. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, well, we have an empty cooler. Uh, I'm not going to complain, but I will tell y'all this. Alright, so I got the ice packs in, but I didn't bring any eggs because I didn't know if we needed any. But let me tell y'all something. When Jason mentioned the idea of the cooler to me, that was all good. But I had one concern. People were so used to coming by and see an egg sitting right here on the counter and they would know that they were available and they would purchase them i didn't know i didn't think people were going to catch on as quick as they did that they were in the cooler we have sold out of eggs every time we put them in here and i think it's just the fact that some people don't realize that unwashed eggs can be unrefrigerated so once they're washed, of course, they have to be refrigerated. We don't wash our eggs because we have this handy dandy roll out nesting box that allows you to not have to. And I'm gonna tell y'all that has been the best investment on our farm up to date besides tractor implements. That roll out nesting box, we were not sponsored by them. We bit the bullet and we bought it. And I'm gonna tell y'all, it has paid off. Lady friend, you gotta get down so I can open the box. Let's see how hard you girls have worked. Ooh, we look at here. We have 21 eggs today. You ladies have been doing a great job. All right, so I wanted to show you guys a little something about the nesting box. It's made by Best Nest Box. And I tell you, it's um it's wonderful. Look at the eggs. There there is not a blemish on any of the eggs. And y'all, we used to spend so much time washing and cleaning eggs because if the chickens are sitting on the eggs after they lay them, well, they're not exactly clean and it just um, creates a little bit of a mess. So with this box being on an angle, as you can see, what happens is, and I wish one of them would lay right now because it's almost like a vending machine for eggs when they do lay. <laughs> the other day I was gathering and one of them laid and it came rolling out right in front of me and it was just like I had put my money in a vending machine and asked for an egg to come out. But they lay it up in this area that has like indoor outdoor carpet in it that came with it and then it rolls down into this tray 
Well, the tray, they can't get to because it has a cover on it, but it also has a bar where they can fly up on here and get in the box. Right, Logan? This, I believe, is a four-foot nesting box, and I mean, we get 20, 22, 24 eggs a day. So that should tell you about what size box you need for how many chickens you have. All right, into the freezer with the ice pack that I took out, and we got a carton some eggs. I told y'all that I gathered, oh goodness, I can't remember how many today, but it wasn't quite two dozen, and that's just about the case every day. This is a carton I had from yesterday. You can see there's two empty holes. So I'm always a couple of eggs shy of two dozen, but that's okay. So we'll get these cartoned up and taken out to the stand. But I've been thinking about something, and you guys brought it to my attention. People don't want to get out of their car and open a cooler and see it empty. They need to know if we're sold out of eggs. So I've been trying to figure out how I could come up with a solution for that. I think I got it figured out, but I might need Jason's help. So I'm going to get this carton, run the idea that I have by him, and see if we can't get something figured out because I don't want to get out of my car and find out there's nothing there. I said no, no eggs had any blemishes. That one's got a little spot on it. So what happens with this one is I take it home and we use it. We do have these cards that we had made up, and they say, if possible, please return the egg cartons. And they go into every carton of eggs, and it also tells a little bit about our YouTube channel and our website, because there's plenty of people that don't even know we exist. Since I filled those last two holes in with the eggs, that made me even shorter on this carton. But it'll be ready for tomorrow when I have eggs enough to fill it up. But right now I got three dozen eggs that can go out to the roadside stand and I want to get those out there so nobody gets out of their car and is uh, a little bit upset when they find there's no egg. Hey babies, y'all's belly's full. You look like you're enjoying the sunshine this morning. All five babies laid out. And y'all, I could, I could ride side by side. I, I do a lot of a walk in in the mornings. Uh, I walk from the house to the barn. But like I said, I could take my bike, I could ride the side by side. But I'm feeling so much better these days that I just feel like I need to appreciate. I need to appreciate that I have the ability to walk and to be able to get to the roadside stand two times instead of laying in the bed and wondering when a new day will come that I'll feel better. So y'all, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be able to carry three dozen eggs and walk out to the stand as many times as I need to. Still have days that are not so perfect, but I'm thankful. I am thankful for every day that I feel like getting out of the bed and, and working on the farm that I'm supposed to be. All right, three dozen eggs going in. And I'm gonna show y'all what my idea is before I run it by Jason and see if y'all think it'll work. It needs to be turned around. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. So the road is obviously right here. Well, people come in from both directions, pull in our driveway to stop at the farm stand but I think the biggest thing is gonna be convenience for the person that gets the last dozen eggs to indicate that. And I don't want them to have to go to any trouble. So my thoughts are, I had a leftover one of these fence boards that Jason used when he covered up the front of the cooler. So I'm thinking if I take one of those fence boards and I screw it on the side right here, and I put a little note, when you take the last dozen eggs, put the board down this board will extend out i don't know three feet or so so somebody can see it as soon as they pull in they won't have to get out of their car and it'll say egg sold out and then when i replenish the eggs i can fold it back up i don't know if this is going to work 
but that's my thought. Okay, so I ran my idea of the fence board past Jason, and we went to the stand and looked, and he thought that that would not be such a good idea. I, well, well, you had a better idea. Well, I think it's a good idea, but I just don't think customers will know what to do. Well, that's, you didn't think it was such a good idea. So you've got something else in mind. Something more simple. Right. This obvious what to do. Yes. So we're going to attempt to do Jason's <laughs> way and see if it'll work. Yeah. You think it will? It's going to work. All right. We got to let these people know. Nobody wants to get out of their car I and understand. not find sense. eggs. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this is it. And my plan is to take one of these hooks, put this on the stand right here, right up under the eggs, do like this. Then we'll have instructions on top of the cooler. It says, if you get the last dozen eggs, please flip sign around. So they'll flip the sign around like that. I think this will work. So Jason thinks he has this all figured out. He is going to screw a sign on the top of the cooler with instructions as to what to do when you take the last dozen eggs. And the reason he's screwing it on there is because the cooler creates humidity on the outside and there's no way tape would allow the sign to stick. So shallow screws in the top of the lid are going to be the answer, we think. Okay. okay, so you got your little hook on. Mm -hmm. All right, eggs in stock. So when somebody gets the last dozen, what do they do? All right, eggs think? out of stock. Does that work? Well, they won't have to get out of their car, that's for sure. So let's hope this works. I think it's gonna work. Well, I'm happy to have this sign business done because you know, we just don't want to get out of our car and realize that whatever we came for is not available. That's right. But Jason and I have some fence work to do. And then you guys and myself are going to make something very, very delicious. Stay tuned. Well, we are breaking for lunch from our fencing work. And I just took a gander over at the stand and it says eggs out of stock. So that tells me somebody read the instructions. Somebody bought all the eggs. Let's go make sure. All right, check this out, y'all. Out of stock, somebody flipped it. And indeed, somebody bought all the eggs. I'm definitely gonna need more chickens. All right, y'all. It's late in the afternoon. Jason and I have just finished up our fencing project that we had going on today. And I am about to go inside and make something with some of my blemished eggs. So what am I gonna make? Y'all, it is the easiest recipe and the most delicious recipe that I could possibly show you guys. What is it? Cream brulee in the Instapot. The first time Jason and I ever had this dessert, we were flabbergasted. I mean, we just, we knew it was something that we both loved, but we also knew it was probably something we weren't gonna make at home because it seemed really complicated. So while we enjoyed it in restaurants for a long time before I learned how to make it in the Instapot. And I'm sharing this with you today because I want you to see how simple it is and how amazing it turns out. So y'all don't feel like you gotta follow along with me because the recipe will be on the website, but I am gonna go over what I'm doing step by step. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is start off with two cups of heavy cream, and we're going to heat this in a saucepan until it becomes mm, about 158 degrees. Now you can use a meat thermometer, a candy thermometer, whatever you have, to make sure that this is up to the correct temperature. Now to the heavy cream, I'm going to add one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla extract 
and just a pinch of salt. And we're going to monitor this until it gets to the correct temperature. Anywhere from 158 to 176 degrees is what you want. You don't want it to scald, that's for sure. So we're just going to keep stirring it, not continuously, but to not let it burn on the bottom of the pan and let it come up to the correct temperature. All right, y'all, I'm at the correct temperature. I'm at a, about 164 degrees. So next step is to have six egg yolks. And y'all look at how orange those egg yolks are. One of the benefits of having free range chickens is those beautiful orange yolks. Now to the six egg yolks, I'm just gonna add in six tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now we're gonna whisk that around, make sure we get that good and combined. And then so we don't scramble our eggs when we add it to the mixture, we're gonna temper it. And what that is gonna do is just prevent the scrambling from happening. So uh, just a tablespoon at a time to get those eggs up to the same temperature as the milk mixture. So once you've got the eggs tempered, add it to the cream mixture So now I'm just going to pour the mixture into six ramekins and you want it about 85% full. So what we're going to do now is wrap them tightly in full. Each one of them. All right, we're ready to go. Got to get our Instapot set up and we'll get these put in. Okay, so my Instapot has been around for a long time, but just about every one of these is going to have what's called a steamer rack that comes with it. And one of the conveniences of these is it allows you to cook foods without drying them out. So one way we're gonna do that with the cream brulee is to add one cup of water into the pot. The actual ramekins will not touch the water. They'll be sitting on this rack here. Okay, in go the ramekins. They're not going to all four fit beside each other. So we're going to stack them. All right, so they're all stacked in and we're just going to lock the lid in place and pressure cook on low for 13 minutes. And then once the 13 minutes is completed, we're going to let it naturally release the pressure for 15 more minutes. And what that means is it has a little valve on the top of the pot that you can release the pressure. And we're not going to do that. We're going to let it naturally release for 15 minutes and then mash this button, which will let the pressure escape. That allows more cooking to be done without temperature being added. Okay, so it's been a total of 28 minutes, but here's the hard part. First of all, I'm going to peek at it and make sure it's set up. But second of all, it's almost 8 o'clock and these have to be refrigerated for four hours, so, or overnight. I'm thinking that we may have creme brulee for breakfast because I'm not really interested in staying up till midnight to see how it tastes. But I'm gonna take a peek here and make sure it's set up. Y'all look, you can see it's set up. There's no doubt about it. It's just gotta chill and I will be back with you in the morning to taste it. Okay, y'all, it's the next morning, and this next step is probably my favorite part of the whole recipe. And when I first made this, I ordered this little device, and it's, it's a torch. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of sugar on the top and use this torch to caramelize it to make it a hard crust that you actually crack into with your spoon and get into this delicious dessert. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top. So now we're just gonna All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now I gotta get Jason down here and we're gonna give this a try. Well, I didn't even have to call him. He was upstairs and he heard me say, get Jason down here and give him a try, give it a try. So here he is. Cream brulee for breakfast. Are you going to object? No, not at all. Hear that? Yeah. Sounds good, doesn't it? That's always my favorite part about the cream brulee. 
cracking it open. Just cracking it open. Well, I'll let you do the honors then. Listen. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at the crust that it made on the top. It's almost like a piece of candy. That's so, that's my, that's the best part of a cream brulee. They're so good. Cream brulee for breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. Leave some for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh-oh, I'm bringing the whole crust up. Mm. They're so good. That's, that's like one of my, that yeah. probably is my favorite dessert. Guess what? We got five other ones in the refrigerator <laughs> that we can have with a meal or mm, after a mm. meal and not specifically for breakfast. Mm, Cream so relay for the win? Yeah, I love it. All yeah. right. Well, I hope that y'all get a chance to make this because it's super easy and I know you're going to like it. So you can find it on the website. Yep. What is that, Jason? www.cog farm.com. All right, y'all check it out and y'all be good.